the needle on the record. Here we go now, baby. Right back in to the action for another day of the week here. Okay, I hope you're all having a lovely day here. That's enough small talk. Three total picks, two for the court, one for the ice. Let's get right into the action. We're going to start things off down in Utah where the Grizzlies are in town. And I'm going to take those greasy Grizzlies plus five and a half. And let me tell you, this line is a complete and total embarrassment. This is one of these situations where whoever set this line, pretty strong possibility come this time tomorrow, they're going to be out of a job. Have we not been paying attention to what the Grizzlies have been doing here recently? 10-1 in their last 11 games with some huge wins over good teams like the Nets, Bucks, and Suns. By the way, they're 20-2 without John Morant in the lineup, for God's sakes, here this season. The Utah Jazz, meanwhile, just completely melting down at the wrong point of the season. One and six in their last seven games. Take a look at them over their last 10 games. They are 29th and fourth quarter point margin. So maybe a situation where uh, the Grizzlies are behind and they sneak in the back door. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But check out some of these stats, some major advantages here for Memphis over the last 10 games. Opponent EFG shooting percentage first versus 22nd points allowed per 100 possessions. First versus 21st opponent turnover percentage. Ninth versus 25th. So a pretty big defensive advantage for Memphis. And they're also gonna have a big edge from three point land in this game. Last 10 games, they ranked second in three point shooting percentage. The Jazz, meanwhile, 27th an opponent three point percentage. So give me the greasy Grizzlies plus five and a half. Next up. We are going to Brooklyn where the Houston Rockets are in town and I'm gonna take this monster spread, take the Rockets to cover 17 points. So this is a case of perception versus reality here for the Nets. Now the perception is, oh wow, Kyrie's back in the lineup. Kevin Durant is healthy. These guys are putting up some great numbers. Yeah, sure, but you gotta keep in mind, they're barely a 500 team with Kevin Durant back in the lineup. So since his return in games that he's played, and the Nets are just eight and seven in those games. A bit surprising there. And you know, we've seen them have trouble over the past month against some bottom tier teams, had trouble putting away the Pistons, the Blazers, the Knicks. And check this out. I put this one out on Twitter earlier and it got a pretty big reaction. So the Nets as a home favorite this season, an absolute and total disgrace, 424 and one overall against the spread as a home favorite. In their last 21 games as a home favorite, they are one and 20 against the spread, my God. And this is also a case of perception versus reality for the Houston Rockets. The perception is, hey, this is one of the worst teams in the NBA. Yeah, absolutely, over the course of the entire season, the record indicates that. But you know, this is a team that's, uh, they're not giving up. Steven Silas has this team trying pretty damn hard here to close out the season. You check out some of their numbers, over the last 10 games, improvements on both ends of the floor. Last 10 games, they're in the top half of the NBA. An EFG percentage, opponent EFG percentage, free throw attempt rate, opponent turnover percentage, three point percentage. And surprisingly, they rank number one overall in the NBA in opponent three point shooting percentage. And when you have a big spread like this, you gotta see how the teams are playing in the fourth quarter and the Nets are taking their foot off the gas in the fourth. Over the last 10 games, they rank 29th and points scored in the fourth quarter. Rockets coming in there at 12th. So at the very least, I think the Rockets can keep this one inside 17 points. Maybe it's a situation where the Nets are up big and they take uh, KD and Kyrie off the floor for the fourth quarter and then Rockets uh, slip in the back door. But the Rockets are trying hard. So give me them to cover the spread. And we're going to wrap things up on the ice. Of course, I got to weigh in on this big Senators uh, Montreal Canadiens game. Big game there in Montreal. Good luck finding a public washroom to use in Montreal with the Senators in town. And this is your home for Senators hockey picks, right? A lot of Senators picks on the show here lately. Hit on them as an underdog there on Friday night. So I'm going to look to hit on the Senators again. Minus 114 against the Canadians here. So a big defensive edge for Ottawa in this game. High danger chances allowed over the last 10 games. We have fourth versus dead last in the NHL there from Montreal. You take a look at some home away splits, big analytics edge here for Ottawa. On the road, last 10 games here, 12th and in expected goals for percentage, respectable, but seventh in high danger chances for percentage. Montreal, meanwhile, 31st in each of those categories over their last 10 games at home. 
And the Canadians here not doing themselves too many favors, spending way too much time in the sin bin. The fourth most minutes spent on the penalty kill over their last 10 games. Ottawa, meanwhile, the sixth fewest uh, time spent uh, on the penalty kill. So give me Ottawa to take care of business there in Montreal. So there you have it, my three best bets of the night. If you're looking to do some handicapping tonight, head on over to oddshark.com. All the information you need to make winning picks on game day. Good luck with your bets tonight unless you are fading me. And as always, keep chasing that paper. Woo!